Hello all. You know, I've talked about gardening without a yard. I'm going to take my deck, which I have shown many times on past videos, that the more I look at it, it looks really sad. And I'm going to change it. This is a small deck. And I've got all these upside down containers, which you could build your own easily and cheaply. But I'm going to take these containers and I'm going to change them around. And I'm going to make this deck actually work for me. I mean, I'm putting the same effort into nothing that I could be putting into getting far more. I haphazardly come out here and sprinkle some dill and maybe stick in a garlic chive or some parsley and that's it and I walk away. Then I end up with sow thistle and yes, I put in some popolo. But see, I let the sow, now the sow thistle, I let that grow for the birds and the birds do come and feed on the deck. And I've got the popolo, but really, truthfully, I don't need to do that. They've got enough sow thistle growing on the hillsides. So I wanna change this and show that I could grow so much food in such a small area. And that if you think about what you're doing, you can cut your work down and grow more. For instance, these upside down planters are supposed to grow tomatoes hanging upside down. I've never had really good luck with that. They seem to hang there and then of course they just dangle all over and you're trying to, tr because tomatoes get so big, you're trying to train them up. So I have not hung them upside down. I've planted on top. And then what I have done, because when you water it, the water runs down, is I grabbed another pot and I stuck it on the bottom, which this tomato grew by seed, just by squeezing a tomato in there and grew a beautiful tomato plant in the winter. And look how many tomatoes I've got on this. And it just keeps growing and growing. But that pot down there is being watered by when I water this, it just drips down. And of course I may add some extra water in there. Things like that, double duty, triple duty, make things work together. Now this I just picked up. I was kind of really interested in this. It's built really nice. I got this at the dollar store. It was more than a dollar. They actually wanted two dollars. And it's really heavily built. It's meant, I guess, for a balcony or hanging on a chain link fence or something. It's got holes yeah, on the top here to attach it. But it was built so good, not made in China, like I said, made in Israel. And I thought, wow, I'm gonna see if I can do something with this at the same time. So I ended up buying one in the beginning, and then I thought about it, see how it's dripping? I'd wanna put a pot there. Wherever you have something dripping, you wanna put a pot underneath. And there's nothing in here. This is just water from the rain. But I'm gonna see if I can add a couple of these on, even if it's just for seed starters. I'm not sure, I might put parsley. I have to see how I wanna hang this. Right now, as I'm walking around, this is the thought process of what's going to happen to this deck. But truthfully, I mean, it's sad. I had to put a cage around here because the dogs were pulling something off. I stuck some pepper seeds in there and they grew. I stuck some apple seeds out here that grew. Even in the winter, this is a tomato that was squeezed in here and grew a bunch of tomato plants and it's struggling. The black stays warm in the winter and it works out really, really well for the winter and cooler weather. But you know what? It also works well for the summer, so go figure that out. There's some lettuce down here, but you know, a slight organization out here, and I could have so much more growing. I did grow some Korean melon down there, which I'm going to clean up. So let's see what I can do in the next few months. And you never throw this away. What I'm going to do is collect all this, all the brown. It's going to go back into the pots. This, by the way, is asparagus and celery and parsley. And I'm going to see what I can do with the, with the deck here. Will it work? Will it not work? Will I put the time in that I said I would? And it's really not that much time. It's the initial time of getting this set up and thinking about it. See what I did here? I figured this is only, what, five inches of soil goes in here. So I put a pot on top. Let's see if we can see that. See the pot? And now I can plant around here. I've got lettuce coming up. I've got walking onion, more walking onion, and a pot. And then on top, 
I'm growing some Swiss chard and then a cutting of dinosaur kale from my garden. And also, if you're wondering, do I compost and place on the deck? I do. That's why I put these containers here. They have big holes on the bottom and they're sitting on top. This has kind of sunk a little bit already, the soil in there. It's kind of broke down. I don't have to move this. All I have to do is add a little bit more to it when I'm ready. But I compost and place in there. And I compost and place in that one. Just dig a hole, drop in some kitchen scraps, some dried leaves that I'm picking right from the deck, and cover it. That's the main thing. You've got to cover it with something because the only thing that's going to break down is what's underneath. Anything right on the top isn't going to break down. But right, it will, it will, I shouldn't say that, it will very slowly. But for the microbes and the organisms that need to chew on it, they're underground. Your earthworms are underground. They're not going to come out for it. So just, you know, dig a little hole, drop in some kitchen scraps if you're doing deck gardening or balcony gardening or porch gardening, and then just cover it up after you drop it in there. Just put a little, you know, just with the soil that's in there. Just dig a little hole, drop in what you want. Let's say I was going to take, just for instance, this. You put the leaf in there. And you cover it up. That's it. All gone. That leaf will break down. If I left it on top, it wouldn't. But it will break down. Here, I just put some popolo seeds. And it grew. Now, popolo won't grow really good here. It's still flowering. Look at that. It's still opening. Because it's not going to grow from seed right now because popolo really likes the warm weather. Being 40 degrees last night, well, it's not going to grow. The plant itself will continue to grow. See the flowers on the top and the seeds, the seed heads? But to start a new plant, it's not going to grow right now. So let's see what I can do in the next few months. Uh, give me six months. Little by little, I'll come back and show it. And maybe I can clean this up and be a little more productive. Even this. Come on. What's the matter with me? This is grass. This isn't anything. Just something blew in there and I left it. And yes, I did neglect it. But I will tell you one thing. I do harvest from this. I absolutely do harvest. Last minute at night might be dark. I don't feel like running into the garden. I run out on the deck here and I do grab greens. I do grab celery. I do grab walking onion and garlic chives. And that's what's nice about a deck. But there's just so much more I can grow out here. And why not put a little more time and get a little more to grow? So let's see how some of these work. Let me see what ideas I come up with. And I'm going to build another, I'm going to call it an upside down uh, planter, but I'm not. It won't be upside down. I'm going to build another planter. Let's swing around here. In this mix, look at the squash that got left in the house and rotted. I'm going to take those seeds and I'm going to throw them out in one of my compost and place bins and that squash is going to grow. I want to build a planter here. This is a great wall to stay nice and warm on cooler nights. And then in the summer, the way the sun comes, this will be shaded. So it should work out perfect. So I'm going to see if I can get a planter put here, get that cleaned up and freshened up, clean up the deck a little bit. This is rainwater I collected, and I do like putting a plate on top or collecting some rainwater and keeping it in, in buckets or gallon jugs just for the seeds. I like to start seeds in rainwater. And, and you don't have to. You do not have to, but that's just if I've got it, I use it, and if I don't have it, I don't. So let's see what happens in the next few months here. And... Maybe I'll get some different ideas of how to get this going. But um, I do have to do this better. This is ridiculous because I'm wasting my time. It's like I go through here and it's like, oh, there's mint here. I don't want to kill the plant. And there's mint down there. I don't want to kill the plant. This is oregano. We don't take this out. This is oregano. And over here, see, this is mint. And that's mint. And that was mint. This is ridiculous. I go out there and I try to get Gary to take it. Take my mint. It's wild mint. I didn't even plant that mint. It came up from seed and it doesn't taste good. And yet I don't have the heart to yank it out. It doesn't even smell that good. He's put a little bit in some hot water and tried to make tea. He's not crazy about it. So what am I keeping it for? I'm talking to myself now, aren't I? Because you don't want to hear that. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't want to take things out. I've got to be brutal. I've got to come out here and say, this is a waste. This has to go. That down there is chocolate mint. And that's got to be cleaned up. 
and maybe some wood chips or soil dropped on the top and it will come back. It doesn't like the winter, so it's died back. Same thing in there, it's got some parsley growing and look, I even have a pepper down there. But I do have to be more brutal than that and get rid of this. And this, I would never want to compost in place. That's out because I don't want any more of this to grow. When I grow mint, I want to grow chocolate mint. I don't need any more orange mint. We don't use a lot of orange mint. I have orange, I have strawberry. And spearmint Gary likes and peppermint. So maybe up here for a quick tea at night, if I haven't made a mint tea, maybe have some chocolate mint growing, which I do have down there. I've got to just clean that up. And maybe peppermint, but that's it. Clean this up. I don't need an apple tree. What am I going to do with an apple tree? I've got an apple tree over here. I have a habit of sticking seeds in. Okay, so now I've got an apple tree. I don't know if I'm going to take the time to graft. If I was going to put that much effort into growing a tree at this stage of the game, I'd probably want to buy a good tree. I mean, I could try to graft for fun, but by playing around with this, and not doing anything in here, I could be growing valuable food, even if it's just lettuce. Romaine lettuce, which grows like a weed here. I should be growing romaine lettuce. You know, and this is what I need to do. This, that is actually wheat grass growing that I did plant and the dogs like to nibble on that. That's purposely grown. So there's different things I can do for me and the animals and for Gary, of course. So this has to go, a lot of it has to go. These are orange trees. You know, this is, this is enough already. I've got orange trees, apple trees, pomegranate trees coming up all over in here. I need to get more beans growing. I need to get peas growing. Probably wouldn't want to put carrots up here, but you know what? I could set one up and grow some radishes. And as far as if I wanted to compost in place up here, put a tub and I could be composting in place if I had, let's say, an apartment and I didn't have any place to put it right in this tub here it would feed what was growing in there in there and I could even do one more decker of this if I wanted to put a bigger one and make it taller and compost on the top and then it would feed everything down and it would feed what's ever on the bottom and that is a beautiful garlic chive so don't come on this journey with me we'll see if I do anything good hopefully I will and that will be my new project that shouldn't even take that much time. I just have to find a little bit of time. Oh, time. I never have enough hours in the day. But that's what I need to start doing. And I'm going to start doing it. And that will show that you don't even need a yard to grow food. And like I said, even though there's not much out here, it looks like there's a lot, but there really isn't. It's so sparse. There's still a lot of food. There is a lot of food, lettuce and garlic chives. I have plenty to come out here. This has not been maintained. It's not been groomed. It's not been anything. Nothing's been added. I do come out here and throw, uh, let's say you had a bowl of cereal or something you ate or leftover milk. I do actually pour that in there. And that's what makes the beans grow so good. Right there, just some extra stuff that's soupy or something, not salty, but you know, something with milk or leftovers. I do pour some stuff out here. Well, now I'm going to get more serious and see what we can do with this. So let's see what happens in the next few months. And let's see what happens as summer comes too, because it's very hot on the deck. But normally it does pretty good. So we'll see. But as far as tomatoes, I will tell you that tomatoes love it up here. So with that, have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to my thoughts on the deck. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I'm taking him to the farm. Taking him out to the farm. He's going out to the farm. Okay. Go ahead and take him out to the farm. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a drop. 